Yes. So true or false, if we do not feel led to some type of ministry, then the Holy Spirit is not in us. Hmm. Okay. Sister Renee, you want to go first? If we what? If we do not feel led to some type of ministry, then the Holy Spirit is oh. not in us. False. People act like the Holy Spirit just possesses you against your will and and changes your flesh. It doesn't. Paul makes a distinction between the works of the flesh and the works of the spirit. And then says, you know, the, uh, basically those in the flesh can't please God. That means you need the second birth. You need the birth of the spirit, right? And then he goes on to tell you, and if you're walking in the spirit, you'll exhibit this things and no condemnation. If you're walking in the flesh, you'll exhibit this things and condemnation. So he distinguishes you can walk in the old man, which is the dead guy, the flesh, or you can walk in the new man. For one, not every person that's saved is called into the ministry. Every person is called and told to preach the gospel to every creature. Peter tells us to have an answer for the hope that we have. So we're all supposed to do that. But uh, just because you're not in some sort of ministry doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. By the way, it says be not many masters. There's a greater uh, judgment on those that teach. And so people need to really consider that. I, I often wonder, I'll see somebody get saved and then six months later, they got a ministry and they're leading people. And I'm like, you don't even have time to read the Bible once, much less actually do an in-depth study. Why are you leading people? So uh, not that any of us are without flaw. We all can be in error. We're, we're all human. But the point is, the scriptures tell us, be not many masters and that there is a body, but many members. There's a purpose uh, that God has for each member and they're not all the same. Uh, some may uh, be called to pray, to be a prayer warrior. Some may pray for the sick. Um, so no, if just because you're not, uh, don't have your own ministry, that doesn't have anything with you having the Holy Spirit. The only thing that determines you have the Spirit of God is if you have believed the gospel. The scriptures say, in whom ye also trusted. After that, you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. After that, you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So because you heard the gospel, which is that Christ died for your sins, that he was buried and he rose again the third day, because he did that, your sin debt's paid, and he gives you the gift of eternal life. So if you do believe him, that your home is in heaven, you've been born into God's family, and you're trusting Christ because of his sacrifice and his resurrection, then you have the Holy Spirit. That is the only thing that determines whether you have the Holy Spirit. That is why it's so uh, uh, confusing when someone gives you a false gospel, because I can't, you, you can't say they're not saved. You can only say we don't know because we don't know their heart, but we know that right now they're in error and they're not believing because if they were believing on Christ, then they wouldn't think you have to do something or not do something to be saved or to stay saved because they'd be on the foundation of the merits of Jesus and not their own righteousness. So uh, the only determining factor is whether you believed. That's it. Yeah. Amen. So um, if I remember the question, right, I would say certainly false uh, that uh, uh, if, if someone has not uh, come to a realization that they have a ministry to do, uh, that is not an indication whether they're saved or not. And when I say saved or not, because that, that's what uh, the definition of a, of a Christian is. Uh, oh, it's one who has the Holy Spirit. Uh, so if you have the Holy Spirit, you're a Christian. And if you, uh, you, and you have it, if you've believed, once you've believed, 
you've been, uh, the Bible says, quickened. The, the Spirit of God has uh, entered you, and it's called the baptism of the Spirit. So the Spirit of God enters you when you believe, brings your spirit to life, and, and uh, it's regeneration. Now you're born again. You're a new creature. Matter of fact, uh, we were talking about this last time, I think, or maybe it was on uh, the discussion with uh, Jordan the other day on his channel. But I, was, I think we were talking about uh, um, being re regenerated. Uh, but uh, th that's really what a, a Christian is. You are born again. You have the Holy Spirit of God. Now, when you have the Holy Spirit, the Bible does say that we can grieve the Spirit, we can quench the Spirit. And it also says that if you're truly a child of God, that uh, then you will be subject to uh, chastisement. So these are the only things that I'm aware of that we, we could say, well, though, if you're truly born again, you have the Holy Spirit, then you should be experiencing these things because the Bible clearly says that we could be grie grieve the Spirit, quench the Spirit, and uh, be chastised. But as far as understanding and, and, and um, working in a ministry, that, that is not a test for, for whether you have the Holy Spirit or not. Uh, I think that the mistake people make uh, uh, overall in trying to make these judgments, first of all, is making the judgments. <laughs> Why? Why do you want to judge other people's salvation? I mean, if, if anybody who is... Uh, uh, so concerned about whether everybody else is saved and trying to, to trying to always evaluate whether someone else is saved, other than just asking them, what do you believe? What's the gospel? And, and, or uh, uh, are you going to go to heaven and why? I mean, there's there's some diagnostic questions we can ask them, but once we hear their testimony their confession of faith, then we can judge, okay, they believe the gospel, so they're saved. Uh, that's all that's required. We, we must not have any other tests other than they believed. Um, but when, when a person is born in the natural way from their mother's womb, uh, we don't know from the moment of birth till their last breath how their life will go. Uh, some people, uh, they seem to be very successful in life. Uh, everything they do is, is golden, and, and, and they're successful at a young age, and they, and, they, and they succeed to great heights. But not everybody does that. Some people are more average. Most people are more average. Uh, and, and then some people seem to never really succeed. And when, let's say, when I say succeed, I'm just talking about worldly endeavors, like getting an education, getting a career, or, you know, or earning a living. These things, some people just seem to fail. But guess what? All three of these people, the, the, the failure, the average person, or the highly successful person, all three of them are absolutely equal in humanity. Not one is more human than the other. And it's the same thing with the new birth. Uh, if each of those people were born again spiritually, uh, some people will excel as a Christian. And they'll, they'll from, for, from a, uh, early on, they'll just uh, pick it up and do great and run with it and become great ministers and servants. And you can see great growth and maturity. And other people, most people, they're just kind of average. And then some people, you look at them and say, have they ever learned a thing? They don't seem to have grown at all. And yet, uh, not one is more born again than the other. It's just how, how you will grow and mature and become productive fruitful Christians or not. And part of that is up to us in terms of how we will respond to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in us is, is trying to direct us, trying to transform us. We can embrace the Holy Spirit. And when we do, then uh, we allow it to change us, change our desires and our, our, our interests. And, uh, and, or we can resist the Spirit fight against it and, and, and walk in the flesh instead of in the spirit. And those people, they, they tend to not grow or grow li li very little. So that's, the, that's really what you need to understand. And I, I, I don't know, to me, one of the saddest uh, things in Christianity is 
so many people are constantly trying to judge other people's salvation. And, and we shouldn't be doing that. All we're supposed to be judging is, do you, are they, did they believe or not believe? That's the only test. All right, uh, Brother Jordan. Yeah, so the one thing I would say is, as a Christian, you have to learn that there are periods of learning and then there are periods of calling. So you can definitely be saved and not experience your calling. And that's how I would redefine ministry here, because I think so often we look at ministry and we think that that entails that we need to be on the mission field or in front of a pulpit or on YouTube. Um, but we know from the Bible, and I'm actually going to read from Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, and it says, And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Basically, what our calling is when it comes in the circle of believers is to edify one another beyond that it's leading each other to christ that's going to look different for everybody and i think it's important to realize for example when i was living in tampa there was this lady who was working in um she was working as an uber driver and her only reason for working for uber was so she could share the gospel with some people and i just thought that was absolutely amazing but you're not going to read anything about an uber driver in the bible so i think it's important to remember that even if you don't necessarily have a calling right now doesn't mean the holy spirit is not working in your life and it is important to seek out what your calling may be or if the Lord is just prompting you to wait and learn right now. And you do that through prayer. You do that through devotion. There's a lot of different ways that we gain clarity from the Lord. Some people may need to fast. It really depends on what you feel called to do in that moment to reach out to the Lord. But I would definitely say certainly false. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Amen. All right, uh, Renee, would you like to say more about this? Just that, you know, normally when people uh, do these things, it really is to judge other salvation. And I, I don't I don't know why people constantly. Jesus said a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. It's like we just don't believe God. You constantly got to see something to prove it, you know? And so everybody's looking for earthly things to prove spiritual truths. And it's, you can't, you can't do that. If God says that you're given, the, you're sealed by the Holy Spirit till the day of redemption, because you trusted Christ, to trust him means that you believe you have eternal life. And when you leave this body, your home is in heaven. You are secure. You've trusted him with your soul. Uh, if you don't do that, how can you know? I mean, that's the only way you have the Holy Spirit. So we got a bunch of people running around trying to act like Christians to be Christians. Instead of simply being a Christian by trusting Christ and then the spirits in them. So, you, you know, these people want to think that they're saved because they're acting saved and it's backwards. They got to be saved first. And it doesn't seem like they're willing to simply believe the gospel. That's why they work so hard against it. I, I don't get, do they not understand they are working for the devil? They are working. I don't care how righteous what they say is. They are working against the gospel. And, and they're working under a wrong assumption that those of us that believe the true gospel don't have sound doctrine. We do. That salvation is just the beginning. The Christian life is a whole separate topic. And we believe in all the things they accuse us of not doing and believing in. So I think all of these questions stem from that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember um, uh, Bible Jim, uh, every once in a while, I like to refer to something he said to me, but uh, 
he, he said that um, what a person needs to do immediately after they get saved is uh, seek from the Lord, what is am I called to do? Lord, how do you, how do you want to use me? That should be our main ambition is find out what your calling is, find out how you fit into this body of Christ. And once it becomes clear to you what, what your ministry is, then just get busy doing it. And, uh, and we, we don't get busy working in ministry, whatever it is. Uh, we're not doing it because uh, we feel like, oh, gosh, I'm obligated to do it. Or, oh, I better do it to prove to everybody I'm a sincere believer. Or I better do it because maybe God will just change his mind and reject me. Or No, we, if we don't do it, or do do it, it doesn't change our standing before God. We're in good standing permanently, right standing. We are righteous. That's in right standing with God. That's permanent. It's irreversible, irrevocable. So we don't need to worry about that. But uh, if, if we get busy working for the Lord, first of all, think of it as a privilege. What a privilege it is that the God Almighty, Wants, wants you and me, each of us, to play a part in his plans. And uh, so think of it as a great privilege. We get to be an ambassador for Christ. I mean, an ambassador. That's one of the most prestigious titles there is. And, uh, and then, uh, and Paul says, even the, the, the part of the body that seems to be the least important, it, it is, uh, I forget the exact verse, but I bet Renee knows where it is. Uh, but even the small parts are really uh, maybe the most important part. Um, so it, it doesn't matter what your role is. The important thing is that you discover what your place is in the body, and then you get busy doing it. And guess what? When we get meet Jesus and, and uh, all of our ministry works are put in that fire, uh, it's going to be a joyful thing to see some of it has, oh, gold precious gold silver precious gems crowns wow that's wonderful and cities that you you let me rule over certain cities i mean i i don't know how it's going to be exactly but these are some of the things the bible tells us and jesus says we should get busy build, building up treasures in heaven and and paul says that you know there's going to be this judgment in of, of our ministry works so you don't want whatever you've done to be burned up like wood, hay, and stubble. Uh, so um, we are not only is it a privilege for us to serve the Lord, but it is rewarding. <laughs> um, all right, uh, Brother Jordan, any more on this free from you? Yeah, I just want to say two things, actually. The one thing, you know, we need to remember that our assurance of salvation comes strictly from pointing to the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If we don't point to that, we make the same mistake that Calvinists and other Lordship salvations make, and that is to point to our own works. They have all the right answers of who to trust by grace through faith, but then when it comes down to actually knowing if you are saved, it's basically rooted into your works because if the holy spirit is working in you that will be evident and so what happens is man makes themselves the standard and it's just so ironic that everybody that is at their own standard is saved and everybody below them is not saved and everybody that's above them well let's face it they don't think anyone's above them they think they're the most loyal christian ever so that's what I want to say about that. Also, I like what you said about um, being ambassadors, Brother Luke, because this is something that I try to drive home to people all the time is not only are we ambassadors, but we are sovereign citizens in this world. We have a unique privilege that if any power of evil comes against us, we have such a unique authority because we have the entire kingdom of god behind us we have an army of angels we have god almighty so when we walk in our authority there is going to be 
hardly anything in the spiritual realm that can come against us to successfully. And it's not going to come against us in the way that we're not going to experience any persecution. It's going to come against us in the way that it's going to limit our faith. So the more we are abiding in that assurance of salvation, the more power and ability we have to walk in that authority. Yeah. Uh, so here we are telling you that um, uh, every every born again believer um, actually becomes a minister. You may not know what your ministry is yet, but you're you're called to serve the Lord. Um, but what, once you discover what your ministry is, <clears throat> then the idea is to get busy uh, doing it. But uh, how is there anything that we could tell you? that this is oh, things you can actually do so that you can grow and mature into a productive Christian. There's four things that come, come to mind. And this is very much just like if we were talking about a secular question, how, how is a person going to become successful in life? Well, first thing they do is they need to eat good food get to, for their health. Uh, and in the Bible, that's the food that we're supposed to consume, the word of God. The scripture says we, we don't live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So get in the scriptures. Uh, then, of course, we know we need some exercise. So uh, uh, exercise is your uh, your ministry working. Uh, and then uh, and then uh, there's uh, the the study uh, is uh, that's that's your education. You need a good education in life. Uh, and, and, and then there's relationship. Well, a relationship with who? For, first with God. We do that through prayer. That's how you build this intimate relationship with, with God. And then the relationship with the other believers. That we call that fellowship. That's what we're doing here tonight. And the more you do all those things, then you will grow and mature. And uh, these questions, no one will ever question, hey, I don't think they're saved because look at them. They, they, they've they never done anything for, for, for the Lord. Well, it really shouldn't even be an issue because we should all be busy serving the Lord. But don't use that as a test to determine if someone's saved or not. Okay?